Welcome back to Tanya in 5. The last few days, we have been studying chapter 23. We are still on our journey to understand how mitzvahs are attachment to God and sin is detachment from God. At the beginning of this journey in chapter 20 and 21, we established that from God's perspective, the existence of all the cosmos are of insignificance to his essence, being that his essence is infinite and that this finite uh, cosmos is all submerged within his essence. And then we explained that in order for God to create our perspective, where we do feel a sense of independence from him, God must conceal his truth. If we were exposed to his truth, that he is the only reality, we would not feel any independence. And then we explained in chapter 22 that this is really what makes different levels of spiritual worlds or any world. It's a question of to what degree is that world capable of experiencing God's truth? The more they experience God's truth, the more surrendered they are to his truth and feel less independence. The more concealed God's truth is, the more independent that reality feels. In our world, where the concealment is at its height, we feel completely independent. To the point that we have such a low level called idol worship, in which God's concealment is so deep that the idol worship declares itself a God. Now in chapter 23, the Alter Rebbe addresses what is a mitzvah. On the one hand, the mitzvah is part of this physical world, but yet it's godly. So he explains that, in essence, all that exists is simply because God wants it to exist. So the want, the desire that God has for something to exist is invested in that item to give it its particular form of life. So we need to ask, what are the things God really wants and what are just a means to an end? So in idol worship, God truly wants it to exist, which is why it does. But as we explained in the last chapter, it's only a means to an end. In order for there to be free choice, there must be some sort of choice to choose something other than God. So it's not as if God really wants the idol worship. It's just a means to an end. So what is the end? What is the true desire behind all the desires God had? Right? God wants this entire cosmos up into and including idol worship as high as angels. These are all in existence because God wants them. But they are all there to create a structure in which something that he truly wants is going to happen. So what's that thing he truly wants? Well, as we explained in chapter 22, what God truly wants is a relationship with the Jew. That relationship is forged in the act of mitzvah and the study of Torah. The study of Torah and the act of mitzvah then is not merely something we do because God asked us, but actually invested in those actions is God's ultimate desire and God's ultimate self. For he invested himself to create all the universe. And all the universe is created because of a certain end, something he truly wants. And what he really wants is that mitzvah. So that is where he is really found. Think of it like a business. I have a lot of things I want in my business. I want overhead. I want an office. I even want to pay taxes so I can have a market where I can sell my product. These are all things I want. But what do I truly want? What's fueling all the other desires I have? Well, I want to have product and sell it. And in order to sell product, I must have an office. In order to sell product, I must pay taxes so I can have a market in which I can sell my product. But those are all wants that are a means to an end. The end is the product itself. The same thing is true of all the cosmos. These are all things that God wants, but the end and true desire is in the act of Torah and mitzvahs. So even if I don't feel the fact that this mitzvah is godliness itself, it doesn't change the fact that it is, because that is what he wanted the entire time. The takeaway from all of this is, when we're about to do a mitzvah, and we're about to study Torah, we should remember, this is not merely an instruction that God gave us and God is somewhere at a distance. But rather, in that act is godliness itself. 
And therefore, in my doing it, I bring that godliness and connect with it in an extremely deeply deep way. For I am invested in that godly act. And therefore, I become part of that ultimate desire that God always wanted. Looking forward to seeing you when we conclude chapter 24.